Uh, yesterday we talked to Board of Education candidates for the 6th District. We talked to one from the 4th District, Lynn Fugit, and we have another. J. Scott Clark uh, is on the ballot, and Sally Absher is on the ballot as well. And she joins us in studio this morning. Good morning, Sally. Good morning, Hallory. You've been on the show before, though. Long time ago, long time ago. It was with something else. Yeah. I, I remember that. Well, yeah. welcome, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you so and welcome much. back. Thanks. Um, for for people who don't know, and I just like to reset this every time. Uh, please describe in terms of ge- geography and the schools uh, the fourth district. The fourth district uh, is the southern part of West Knoxville. The schools included are Sequoia Elementary. Uh, Bearden Elementary, West Hills Elementary, Rocky Hill Elementary, Blue, uh, excuse me, um, uh, Pond Gap Elementary, and um, the North Shore Elementary School at North Shore Landing, the new school. Um, high school is West High School, and it also includes the Knoxville Adaptive Education Center. Awesome. Thank you for being here this morning. For people who don't know Sally Absher, let's let's find out a little bit about you. Who's Sally Absher? I um, I am married, um, have two children. I am a professional geologist. I have a master's degree in geology, and I work as a professional geologist and as a public information specialist. So, the skill sets that I have that I want to bring to the board of education are research and communication, and I think those are two skill sets that are um, in need on this Board of Education. Um, My husband is a Knox County teacher. He went into teaching about 14 years ago as a midlife career change. He also was a geologist, worked for Mobile Oil, worked for a couple of consulting firms, but got tired of consulting and really reached the point in his his life where he wanted to give back to the community and and strive for significance rather than success, Mm. as as I say. So what was it, and I've been asking all of the candidates this, what's your why? Um, and, and was there a catalytic event? There, there was. Um, it started about, well, I can go way back. It started when I was in junior high school, which was, I'm going to date myself, this is 1969, and my mom started going up from Cincinnati to Columbus, Ohio, to meet with legislators because she was concerned about the changes she was seeing in public education back then. Um, fast forward to about a year and a half ago, I started looking into and doing some research on Common Core and some of the education reforms and um, was hearing things from my husband and other friends and neighbors who are teachers. There was kind of a growing rise of discontent, and I started attending Knox County School Board meetings. Um, Was very, very impressed by some of the speakers, especially some of the students who spoke out, uh, Ethan Young from Farragut High School. And I was at the board meeting on December 4th when a young um, student from, another student from Farragut by the name of Kenneth Yee spoke, and The catalyst moment was when I was uh, watching him, and he went up and very politely, before he started his five-minute presentation, said, Madam Chair, uh, may I ask for just no more than one additional minute so that I can get all my points in? And the chair looked down at him and said, no. Wow. Uh, Let's take a a quick update, news update. Uh, 742, Sally Absher is my guest. Man injured in a house fire. She is running for school board in the 4th District, and she was telling a story about uh, what her catalytic event was, what made her say, you know what, I want to run. And so this person asked for an additional minute, was told no, and then what happened after that? He spoke very quickly and got all of his points in. He did a, he did a great job. Wow. So what happened for you then, though? It's one thing for you to, to be concerned. It's, it's one thing to attend meetings, even to be vocal, active. It's another to run for office. It is. That is a huge, that is a huge step between just uh, being concerned and, and putting yourself into what I call Hunger Games uh, 2.0. Um, I think, I, again, I'll go back to my, my childhood of origin, and I had a grandmother who was a, a huge role model to me, and she always said, don't complain about something unless you're willing to get in and try to make it better. And I um, currently serve as the state executive committee woman in the Republican Party, so I've been a little bit involved in, in politics from that regard. Um, I just felt I've always thought that local politics is where the the this is where the difference is made, and I thought that's something that I can do. I had a number of friends who encouraged me, Sally, with your knowledge, 
with your experience, with the way you can communicate, you really should should do this. So I had a lot of people encouraging me. And um, nothing against the current incumbent personally. She's very successful, very intelligent, but I just felt that there were things that needed to be done um, and, and said and, and communicated. And I've, that's been reinforced as I go out and knock on doors and talk to people in the community. There is a, a incredible desire for more communication. People don't feel like they have a, a real voice on, on the board or with the direction of our schools. And an elected official is first and foremost elected to represent the people in the district. Uh, it is 7.45 on the Triple H Morning Show. Sally Apsher is my guest. Lynn Fugit was on yesterday. Uh, Scott Clark uh, was scheduled to be on the show last hour. Would you do this uh, favor for me, John? Uh, Scott is on the line, but I want to make sure that he has a, a full opportunity to, to say his piece as well. I'm not going to be able to get to him in this segment. Would you ask him if he'd be willing to come on tomorrow? Because we had him scheduled for earlier. Because uh, I want to give you an opportunity to 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 fully vet what you'd like to to, yeah. to say. So 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 let's talk about some of the current issues. And let me start with the superintendent. Mm -hmm. uh, where are you on the superintendent? How do you feel about the superintendent and his leadership? I have not met Dr. McIntyre personally. Um, I will never attack a person. It's just not my style. Um, I am concerned about his leadership in that um, there was a, a teacher survey done earlier this year, and 70% of teachers surveyed expressed some um, lack of confidence in the superintendent. And I, even the board will admit communication is not his strength. Um, so on and so forth. My concerns about him also are that as a Broad Academy superintendent, he does have an agenda. There is a movement towards privatization, which is concerning to me. Um, how that's all that said, I will work with with whoever the superintendent is. I, I one thing I've discovered in this election is talking to people, and I love the fact it's a nonpartisan race. I never identify myself party. I, when I talk to people, I don't know what party they're registered to, and I just talk to people about issues. That is so refreshing to me, to put the labels aside, to just be able to talk, to find common ground. That's something that's a real strength of mine, so I feel very confident that I can work with Dr. McIntyre. One of my frustrations was back in January when the board voted to extend his contract, and this was in the midst of a lot of controversy and concern. And Dr. McIntyre had said, well, I'm listening to the people. I'm hearing what the teachers are saying. I'm going to do this, this, and this. And the board, 8 to 1, voted to extend his contract, whereas I think it would have done both Dr. McIntyre and the board a lot of good to wait and say, well, let's table this. Let's wait for a year and give him a chance to show the people and regain the confidence of teachers and the community. But they didn't do that. They took that opportunity away from him. And it's going to be hard for him to, to come back and regain that confidence. I don't know if he can. Let's talk about budget. Yes. The, the county mayor was on Monday. He said, look, we've increased the amount, the total amount of money that we are giving to the school system. That's our job. Mm -hmm. They allocate, uh, allocate a lump sum, and then the school decides how to spend it. The school makes a budget request. This is what we think we need. And there is some sort of negotiation that happens. But once it crosses that line school board and the superintendent decide on what to do with that money. Uh, the mayor has just made it very clear, we just don't have it this year, that if you want to find a 1% in increase or raise for teachers or 2%, whatever, that you have to find it within your existing budget. In that relationship between uh, county commission and school board and this, this whole budget issue, should you be elected to sit? How do, how do you view that relationship and how would you handle this? I think that the, the relationship between county commission and the school board, can that there's always room for improvement. I feel that the school board has kind of set the county commission up to be the bad guys no matter what happens right now, which is unfortunate. Um, I agree with Mayor Burchett and the, and the county commission. Um, I know my company didn't have money to give raises this year either. I got a very high evaluation. Um, the, the reality is the economy is not great, and people need to understand that. I think also from talking to people in the district, it would be hard for me to sell, especially any kind of um, increase that would involve a tax increase. You remember, two years ago, the school board asked for $35 million in additional funding. 
And Commissioner Briggs pointed out rightly that that wouldn't be a one-time, that would be a continuing um, increase every year. And I think when the county commission said no, and then six weeks later, the, Dr. McIntyre and the school board found $30 million that they could use in, within their budget, I think people haven't forgotten that. And I would urge the board, and I certainly would do this, to dig down deep. There are always areas you can stop, that you can, you can cut. We don't need to hire outside consulting groups like the Parthenon Group. $1.2 million for a resource allocation uh, study, which was pretty much a, a boilerplate of the same study results, the same report that they gave to Memphis. Now, not all that money was counting money. $800,000 of that was from a grant. But I think we just need to be wise. We need to use local resources. We don't need to, to outsource all these things to other consulting groups and so forth. All right, look, look, give me just to, uh, give me 90 seconds here because I want to give you an opportunity to say the one thing that you'd like to say or communicate this morning uh, as you run for uh, school board in the 4th District. One thing that I'm very concerned about is I hear the board and, and even up to the governor talk about our increased test results and our increased graduation results, and we're on the right track and we, need, we can't go back. And yet I, I because I do research, um, I looked at a report which was um, put out by ACT, the testing organization. It's called The Condition of College and Career Readiness for Tennessee. And the, uh, the average, the, there are ACT benchmarks, English, math, reading, and science. And how many, what percentage of students in the nation, in Tennessee and in Knox County, meet all four of those benchmarks? 26% of students in the nation meet all of those benchmarks, 18% in Tennessee, and 21% in Knox County. That means that fully 79% 79 of our graduating seniors are not prepared for the workforce, are not prepared for um, college without remedial coursework. I think that's embarrassing, and I think how can we keep repeating and saying, our test scores are up, we're doing great, stay on the same track, I just think people need to realize that there's, there's more information out there. How do people get in touch with you? I have a website, which is www.sallyabsher.com. I have a Twitter account, at Sally Absher. I have a Facebook page, Sally Absher number four, because of the fourth district, Sally Absher for school board. Um, and I'd love to hear from people. All right, Sally Absher, thanks for being on the broadcast this morning. Thank you so much, Halloran. All right, it is uh, 7.52 right now, traffic time with Dave Folk.